Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Midday Live on TV3. It's coming to you live from our studio here at Adesawe and around the world on 3news.com. Top of the bulletin this afternoon. Hours of downpour results in flooding in many parts of Accra again. We'll be delving deeper into whether or not we should expect it next year. Parliament begins consideration of vigilante and related offences bill and I will go live to the floor for an update. And also around the world, South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa announces a new cabinet in which for the first time in the country's history, half of them are women. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, let's settle for the details of our story, starting from the House of Parliament now. And the minority in the House is demanding that President Akufuado makes public the Emil Schott uh, Commission uh, report before the Vigilante and Related Offences Bill goes through the consideration in Parliament. The bill is expected to be laid for its second reading uh, which is actually today, and uh, which is the 30th of May. We'll be going there for an update, but let's listen to exactly what the parliamentarians, the minority that is, have been saying about this bill. A commission that stuck to its one-month mandate, presenting a voluminous report to the president. Moments thereafter, the president asked the two major political parties to sit down and find the root cause of vigilantism and end it. The Vigilantism and Related Offences Bill was then brought before the House under a certificate of urgency. The committee shot it down before it rose for recess, calling for broader consultation. The minority expects the president to make the report public. Notwithstanding the discretionary power vested in the president in Article 284 on the publication or otherwise of the report of, of a commission of inquiry, there are compelling reasons why it will be grossly misconceived for the president to seek refuge under the said Article 208 clause 4. How is it that parliament is being stampeded to rush such, such a bill through without recourse to the Emil Short Commission's report, which was uh, a task to investigate those same issues? Did the commission come out with recommendations? Are the recommendations known to you, the public, the media? From where we sit, we don't know of any recommendations. But the constitution gives the president six months within which he must release the report. Do I get the sense that the minority is not going to take part in, quote unquote, the passage of the bill into law in as much as we are, you are waiting for the president to release the report of the short commission. This is a call extended to the president to do the honorable thing by publishing the Emil Short Commission's report. If he does that, the minority will definitely take part actively in the deliberations. But if he fails to publish the um, content of the report, the decision to take part in the deliberations or not is going to be taken at the level of leadership. And security is all... Let's stay in the house and speak to our correspondent, Komla Kluche. He's joined us on the line. Komla, good afternoon. Thank you very much for your time. Has the second um, reading of the bill uh, taken place yet? Well, the, the chairman for the Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs uh, Committee of Parliament, uh, the Honorable Banda, has laid it for the second reading. Mind you, the, the questions that the minority were raising yesterday. Well, uh, we have not had the reports uh, from the short commission being released by the president, but uh, the committee uh, has not been moved at all by it. They have gone ahead to lay it, and uh, the second reading will start in a moment from now. But once the process to lay it has been done, so it, it, it means that members of the House would start making inputs into it to look at the structuring of it, what should be taken out, what should be added, and all that. It, it is, uh, so to speak, uh, nearing the final stage. Um, after this one, there will be a third reading 
where there will be the final amendments that will be made, and then it becomes a law. But the minority uh, has not said anything about it um, uh, as I speak with you, because yesterday they said they were waiting for the president to release the report. But if he doesn't, then they will just advise themselves. As it stands, they haven't said anything. It has been late, and um, the work is ongoing in Parliament. And do we have enough uh, minority representation to, you know, make any inputs? And the concerns they raised yesterday, have they given any hint of raising it again should the reading commence? No, uh, I mean, in terms of the numbers, they, they do not, this does not require numbers at the stand now. This is basically about uh, a lot more head's work, if I, if I have to use that word advisory, a lot of head's work at the um, the inputs that have to be made, they have to look at the, the the language, they have to look at the various articles. Mind you, the memorandum that came from the Minister of uh, Justice and Attorney General on the Vigilantism and the Related Offences Bill had only 10 clauses, but the minority is raising issues that, I mean, it cannot be limited to only 10 clauses because uh, it, 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 the whole thing cuts across. Yesterday, even at the press conference, they raised issues about the fact that uh, 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 people are now being recruited into the BNR and then other security services, and they feel that the bill should be able to address all of that. They do not find those inputs in it. So now, this is the platform where they are going to be making a lot of inputs beyond the committee level for them to be able to fine-tune it for a third reading, which would mean that after the third reading, mm. then the law will eventually see its uh, uh, passage. But the numbers are not required as it stands now. But they are not delving so much into it even as we speak now. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Komla Kluche. He's a parliamentary correspondent. I will be bringing us an update later on uh, in, in our subsequent bulletins here on TV3. So let's stay in parliament because um, the minority, again, is demanding a report on the status of the Major Mahama Fund. Member of Parliament for South Dai, Roxanne Dafamakbo, asked the urgent question on the floor. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia in June 2018 inaugurated the board of the Major Mahama Fund after Parliament legislated Act 960 that gave birth to the fund. A year after the board was inaugurated, Parliament has taken a keen interest in how the fund is being operated. I have just filed a question in respect of the status of the, of the trust fund. Uh, my my inquiry is in respect of how much has been accrued into the funds and whether any disbursements have been made so far to the family and if so, how much uh, and, if, and if we know the quantum at what intervals. Parliament itself is worried the issue of mob inaction has not died down. Two years on Major Mahama, what lessons have we learned as a people? I understand that a monument have been named in his honor. It was what we collectively demanded. But the rule of law and the sanctity and dignity of the human life is still not being respected. We still have lawlessness in the country. We still have incidents of lack of respect to the rule of law and due process some even occasion by government authority and government institutions. That remains very worrying. I guess we've learned to understand situations and be tolerant. I, do not, not, I won't say generally, but is murder actually it sh shocked the whole nation. And if you recollect, it was a dear situation. Everybody was affected by uh, that uh, horrendous act. So we were sober. It got us so bad to reflect. And in terms of mob action, I think people will think twice now about it. It will, it will, it will not just move spontaneously as it happened in that time. I think people will be more restrictive in that regard. This young soldier was innocently killed for no wrong done. 
But thankfully, those who were found to be culpable have been trialed in the court. Our prayer is that the court should speed up to serve as a deterrent for all those who may be finding themselves in some of these things. And society must also learn something. We need to be very careful when, when certain allegations are leveled against people, how we should be able to treat some of these things so that we don't repeat them again. Alright, so welcome back to Midday Live on TV3 and clearly from the footage we just played, it tells you what we're going into. Flooding. Now, a few hours of downpour resulted in flooding in many parts of Accra and uh, we want to bring you a summary of the flooding in the capital in this short video summary because we got it from almost all parts of Accra. Then we'll come in studio and delve into the discussion. Your hair will fill up early. By that time, things no go come up. Things no go. When are the TVs after the watch? The thing no go near me. Right now, is it in balance to the outside? So we no go rise above this level unless it rain again. Which no, no way. Hey, you think like you risk the level way now? I believe you watching us at home may have also seen some of these videos and would be happy if you share them with us. Plus, your thoughts on how, from your position, we can save this country, this capital especially, from this perennial flooding. But we've got the experts here in studio with us. Uh, Mr. Kofi Obing Ayiribi is the Chairman, Quantity Surveyor Division of the Ghana Institute of Surveyors. And then also Dr. John Amaglo, he's a senior vice president of Ghana Institute of Surveyors. He's on my extreme left. Good afternoon, gentlemen, and thank you very much for joining us. Good afternoon, Good afternoon sir. There are those who are saying that part of the blame in terms of the problems we have in Accra regarding flooding should be laid at the doorstep of you, the surveyors, and you know persons that look into the planning of the city. Would you accept such a blame if it's, if it's laid on your doorstep? I'll start with you. Uh, Mr. Vice President? Yeah, uh, not entirely. But you would accept part of the blame? Yes. We need Why? a lot of collaboration. I would say that this problem of perennial flooding, we have the short term, the medium term, and then the long term effect. And with the short term, the government is doing very well by deserting some of the water channels. But when we look at the medium term, that's why we have to try as much as possible to regulate the volume of water that comes into this channel. And in doing that, we have to, the Ghana Institution of Surveyors, Ghana Institution of Engineering, and then the Land Use and Special Planning Authority have to collaborate. And we need to get that data from, let's say, Survey and Mapping Division of the Lands Commission so that we'll be able to actually model the whole of Accra. And in doing that, we'll be able to come up with what is called a cascading dams. Mm. With the help of the cascading dams, the volume of water that gets to Accra will be reduced. Mm. But in doing this, we need to have a digital terrain model of the whole of Accra. When that is done, for the medium term, we'll be OK. But for the long term, Always, we must make sure that 
planning is ahead of development. Yeah, that is, Without this, that, we cannot. This achieve. all sounds like big English and technical uh, jargons or technical terms. I, as far as I can remember, 95, 96 through to 2000, we are in 2019. Have we not had this knowledge all along? And why is it now that it seems to be coming up? What steps have you taken? And this question will go to you. From your outfit, what steps have ever been taken regarding finding a solution to this? Yes, uh, thank you. And I also want to uh, greet all Ghanaians and say that uh, as a built environment professional, it saddens me when situations of this nature occur because they are all preventable. Preventable. They are all preventable. You mean the flats we see they in are Accra all preventable. are preventable. You see, let me quote some biblical word here that in Ecclesiastes, it says, all water flows into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Mm. All the waters we are seeing are flowing into the sea. Yeah. What my senior explained here is that the rate of flow of the water should be controlled. You see, it's the rate of flow into the sea and the amount of water that is coming. That is causing the problem. That is why you realize when it rains, Within one hour, all the rain, uh, the floods uh, succeed. Mm. One big challenge here, which confronts all of us, is that because we human activity, the existing drain and uh, what have you already are broken, we agree to some extent, but because of high incidence of human activity, we have prevented the flow, the swift flow of the water into the sea. So it comes from all over, Kuapinri, wherever. And you, the moment it gets, by the time it gets to say Alajo, the volume have increased, mm. and it should take that same volume to enter the sea. But you see, moving downstream, oh, there is so much silting and with blockade. garbage and blockade. So it does not flow the same into the sea as it is coming. Mm. And there is what we call a backflow. It is a backflow that caused the flood and the damage to property. So as a result of people building in waterways, as a result of drains being choked, as a result of drains being, uh, the, especially, get to Kolebu area, the lagoons. Mm. It is not for nothing that is God it? created all these things. Right. Because there should be a, a holding pan to hold the water and release them gradually into the, into sea. the sea. But yeah, that thing has been broken is, down. So what, we are not getting there. My challenge here is, we have known, okay, I'm not sure this is, recent knowledge yeah we've known this for how many years now have there ever been any steps taken to either the government or the other agencies you mentioned like the planning com committee and the rest to make sure that we clear the water channels and the waterways so that these volumes can go straight into the sea yes, that is what i was talking about the short term plan that government is doing very well from time to time they do clear no but the then now then now but then now, then now it means government has to take the political will to put these agencies together and then come out with final solution. And it's not going to be immediate. It's immediate. But it will involve a lot of financial commitment. Mm. And when we are able to achieve this once and for all, I think the state will work. There and attitude should be the other thing we have to look at. Okay. Our attitude. When you see the class gathering and all of a sudden people carry their garbage and come and drop it in there. We have to put a stop to it. Yeah. How about the concern also being raised about uh, natural waterlogged areas in Accra where people are settling in? Like you mentioned, there are places clearly demarcated as waterlogged areas. Do we know those places? And now that people are settling there, what can be done about it? Well, those are the sites we refer to as the Ramseya sites. Mm -hmm. This also comes into the domain of the municipal and the district assemblies to protect these areas. But now when you go all over the whole country, you see that those areas are being encroached upon. There are buildings rising up. But if the authorities can put a stop to these developments, those water bodies will be the areas that we have to form right. these cascading dams to release the water gradually into the sea. You want to add to it? Yes, um, uh, he said it right. Uh, our attitude, uh, it's also very worrying 
We all know it, like you are saying, but the situation to me is increasing by the day. Because by the day, a lot more people are relocating to Accra. By so doing, the garbage or the fuel that we produce is also increased. And when people continue to throw water into these uh, drainage systems for it to silt, who goes up? It is with the same people. People are building waterways. You talk to them, they say no. Government or agency want to break. Well, which at times I probably will not hold brief for them. But people are building waterways. You mm -hmm. let them go and start breaking them. It is with the same people. Oh, they don't have a place. You have not built for them. And mm -hmm. they say, why are you stopping? It is with the same people. Obviously, they shouldn't have allowed that thing to start in the, in first, the first place. place. Why, when you see them building, you stop and break. But it is never done. These are the human challenges that confront all of us. Which, which areas would you say are the known demarcated places? Well, they may not have been demarcated, but which areas in Accra especially are designated waterlogged or, um, you know, like you say, Ramsayers yeah, Ramsay areas in Accra? Ramsay well, yeah. Do you know, can you help us understand those kinds of areas? For instance, uh, top of my head, I'll say, a place like Agbogloshi consistently that, is a that, massive that is place. Another, it's another big area. Mm. Left to some of us, the whole place would have been relocated. Because the whole it, of Agbogloshi? Yes, because it's a big lagoon. That can, it's a big receptacle that will take the water and release them gradually into the sea. But the whole place has been so silted with garbage and filth to the extent that the volume of water that it should be able to contain has been reduced considerably. Assuming water flowing down is a thousand meter cube, there it can take about say two, twenty or thirty meter cube. So where will the rest go? It will flow back. It will flow back to the Alajos, to the Bubuashes, to wherever. The, 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 there is not the, the, the God in His own infinite wisdom created these water bodies as holding pans, as my senior said, along the, uh, the the various streams that we are. But we are building close to all of them. You move from here Accra to Dome. Mm. The, the streams there have all been encroached upon. And once what the volume decreases, it will, it will, it will flow, flow back, back and we will see what we are seeing. I am not getting a clearer picture of what you are saying, but uh, the, the concern also would be, we've known this for long, have there ever been a collaboration in getting government to take these steps? Is it possible to relocate all these people in Agbogulishi, for instance? Is it possible? It is possible. President Kufu, I am told in 2000, started. That is why he developed some facility somewhere in uh, is it yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kotoku that. area. He started. Ajin, Ajin Kotoku. Yeah, Ajin Kotoku. That, that thing process. cannot come gradually. Yeah. It cannot come all of a sudden. It should be a gradual and systematic effort. You build, you begin to relocate them, and you prevent more people from Coming locating back. into the area. That whole place can be desalted. And we will create a nice lagoon that will even serve us as a recreational area for Accra. We don't have any water body that is recreation. But when you go to a country like Netherlands, mm. they are deep in the sea. Yet, at the end of the day, it rains every day. They are fine with it because they have their solutions to that. Uh, what, what else can be done in the interim? So, for instance, you have the manpower as president and vice to take either the hard decisions or the medium to long-term decisions on how to reduce the flooding in Accra, what would your immediate steps be? The immediate step first is to make sure that all people who are building on the waterways, we identify them and clear them. We should identify and clear. clear. We shouldn't do put a human face no. to it and be lenient. We, it should be hard, straight-up decisions. Decision. To save the people downstream. And if you are able to do that, then gradually we will move to the medium term where we will be looking at the designs and the people coming together, locating the positions where we can be putting those cascading dams that I've already mentioned. But in the interim, the government should continue desilting and making sure that. The funny thing is when you see this pure water such as in mm -hmm. the Odo, it's, it's disheartening. And it's human beings that it's put human them It's human beings, our attitude. That's it. We must actually do something about it. Yeah. That is the first. That doing something about it is my concern because we've been having this conversation year in, year out. Yeah. And so when we say we know the solution, but we are unable to implement it, who's, who, is to, who is to blame in this regard? 
Is it your outfit? Is it government? Is it the lack of political will, irrespective of which government is in power? Is it the citizenry? Where do we lay this blame? I would suggest that Ghanaians in general, we have to change our attitude. Our mindset. And I think we have a, we have a unit that does that. When it comes to election, we are told how to do, uh, how to vote. The same department should be able to let Ghana change their orientation. Mm. Sit with that. Putting garbage in front of the gutter in front of you is not right. Mm -hmm. Moving in a car and throwing the sanctioned water out is not right. Mm. Ghanaians should accept and change our attitudes and we'll make sure that these things will gradually be things of the past. Mm. Your final words? Yeah, thank you. My final word will be, like you said, all of us have to come on board. Recently, I read in on the social media that a country like Tanzania, they have banned plastic bags. Why can't we do the same? And this thing will come with some ramification. It's the same Ghanaians who are calling for a, a, a solution to this thing. Who will rise up. We are losing our jobs. We are lo but there should be alternatives for us. Either to us, when we were growing up, we using these paper bags. We are not seeing the filth accumulating like that. Because it takes several years for this plastic bag to decompose. So it is also another problem. Garbage collection is also another problem. The people will say, look, I've created my garbage. Where should I dispose of them? So it takes a concerted effort. And I believe once the government has started the Selton, that one, we should pat them on the back, let them continue and increase the tempo for the work that they are doing. Whereas, like he says, NCC. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, they should take up the mantle and try and educate all of us. We know what is right, but let all of us come on board to solve the problem because creating a situation where we will say that, oh, it is A, who should have done it? Is it B, who should have done it? Will not help us as a people. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we've been speaking with uh, Mr. Kofi Obeng Ayurebi. He's the chairman of the Quantity Surveying Division of the Ghana Institute of Surveyors. And then also Dr. John Amaglo. He is the senior vice president of the Ghana Institute of Surveyors. And the discussion has been about the, you know, the expected flooding in Accra. And we are hoping that this discussion would put some you know, ideas out there so we can help reduce it, hopefully, in the coming years. We are yet to enter the rainy season. Already, parts of Accra are flooded. How do we deal with it decisively? We'll be following up with government and all the other stakeholders and get to the bottom of this. Meanwhile, the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO that is, says no life was lost during Wednesday's rains. A director of NADMO in the Greater Accra region, Evans Anakwa, explained as far as the organization is concerned, they have not recorded any deaths. There were earlier reports of deaths following yesterday's rains. And uh, he's joined us on the line for an update on whether or not that position has changed. Uh, Mr. AEC, George AEC, good afternoon and thank you very much for your time. Uh, it's been a few hours after the rains uh, from yesterday. Have you had any reports of a lost missing person or any deaths? You know, uh, so far uh, there's no report of loss of life uh, as of uh, midday today, not yet. Okay. We also hear that um, there's been some allocation of about $200 million for the redevelopment of Accra. Can you confirm that to us, and what role are you going to be playing when it comes to the redevelopment of Accra? Yeah, it's, uh, it's true. It's a World Bank sponsored project, a uh, greater Accra uh, resilient and integrated uh, development project. Uh, they're committing $200 million, uh, to that project, and it's going to start in the last quarter of 2020. Uh, so it's targeted as a vulnerable area. Uh, in Accra, Bogoshi, Nima, and the outdoor area, and all. So, yes, it, 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 it's uh, factual, uh, as that commitment is there. 200 million translates to about 1 billion uh, Ghana seeds. Uh, the minister has also said that we will need about 7 billion to radically tackle this uh, challenging flood situation. So, I think there's uh, a good beginning. Uh, I know government will also commit some money to it so that. Uh, radically will confront this issue, especially relating to drainage uh, matters. And finally, we hear that um, you've been able to give some relief items to some of the affected persons from uh, yesterday's rains. Uh, were you able to serve almost everyone affected, as far as you know? 
No, no, as far as I know, uh, we, we, assessment is ongoing so that we can know the actual people affected and then uh, before the relief items will be sent. Uh, if at the regional level they uh, send something, I cannot confirm that. But from headquarters, uh, the assessment must come. That's our normal practice everywhere. We okay. do the assessment after the raise. The raise, uh, the flat, when the raise stops, the flats receive. Then you go, then you can actually know the actual people affected whose livelihood has been taken away. Then you can go and give them relief items relief. and other support that they need. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. George AEC. He's the Communications Director okay. for the National Disaster Management Organization, that's NADMO. And, um, we hope that uh, this discussion has brought some clarity to what you can also do as an individual uh, on how to prevent the flooding in Accra. Stay with us on Midday Live. We'll be back with some more stories. On to some other stories this afternoon. And mortuary workers at the Konfuanochi Teaching Hospital in Kumasi are on a set-down strike, their second industrial action this year. The leadership of the Mortuary Workers Association of Ghana say government has reneged on its promise of improving their conditions of service. Here's a report by Beatrice Spielgarbra. Reasons for the strike, according to the association, include poor salaries, poor working environment and lack of personal protective clothing. In March this year, members embarked on a sit-down strike to press home their demand, but was called off after a series of meetings with the Health Ministry and Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. Two months on, the association says government has failed to fulfill its part of the agreement, hence the decision to lay down their tools. So many things came out. They agree on it. They gave us time to meet them. We meet them after that. They sent us to fair wages and salary. Then from that time, things are not going well. When we meet them, uh, they say do this. Next time do this, so many things. That's why we decided to, up to yesterday, nothing good comes. Then we'll go on strike today. So that's why we are on strike today. He expressed concern about their exposure to health risks due to the non-availability of personal protective clothing. We deal with so many diseases. Hepatite B, PTB, AIDS and others. So we can contaminate. And when you get sick, nobody will care about you. It's only you who go and seek uh, medical somewhere. Lack of uh, protection, this, uh, the shoes, gloves and others. When we go to other mature, they don't have even gloves and boots. Workers at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital morgue were not at post. Motor heads were parked. The facility is currently not taking in bodies from other hospitals, but an emergency team had been put in place by management to convey dead bodies from the ward to the morgue. And we stay on the issue of the strike by the Mortuary Workers Association of Ghana. We go to the western region where Erica J is our correspondent and has joined us with an update of what kind of impact it is having at the Fianquanta Hospital. And Eric, uh, would want to say thank you for joining us. What is the situation there? Have they also taken action in terms of the strike? And has it started affecting people yet as we speak? Regional where Mortuary workers here have joined their colleagues across the country to lay down their tools. When we came here some 30 minutes ago, as you can see, the place is virtually deserted. All what you see are ambulances, about six of them parked here. And we spoke to some of the ambulance workers, and they tell us that since these workers began their industrial action, business has come to a standstill. And with a group of the workers to find out from them how business has been since they declared their intention. Mbocho Akwaba. Yeah, in your... I want to add that much now. What's that you want, Jimmy D? In some time, what had it? Yes, that is Jimmy D. No question. I mean, they won't quit. Since I'm in, they won't quit. They'll send their obedience to the bank. 
obi adin bo di bayangi afi su wo fra wo de yankwa nkafa meka se apo nko fudi won bo di sa be be 10 or 15 wo ja ba what started the match what started started ne dara ya started there yer construct no nzama or kodo ha onye kra anti yes be ahin na wo de won e funa ba ha de yin pa be 15 wo di funa ba ha yes yangi wo da asan ko private matches ana wa fra wo di sa no so yes yankwa si sa meka se po bo di be ya 4 or 5 go wo da e che de wo fra yes yankwa nkafa na o start e be e yo dey nature no em nko fu san hin wa ba de wa ba fu won fu na won ti won yin pa be be 10 or 15 na wa ba de wa ba fu for yes yan for mo hon we send e yakwa strike in ti en ye guma na ba of them no fa kumba o ko ze yon tumi ne hya no nko sin ze nko tumi ne na akoda e hin e guma yere ye na se e hian bo e be fim pen for was one fair me hina na se be na yes yan for wu funu mo wa em be bi a mo ko nda be ka da ne hian no um nti abade poti nti na sisi an wo sida wonye dwuma sinto anam dwuma yesi enke yegma ye salary onye obi tira sisi ame mi gye america se ma yegma 12 good years still me da ho ya kashwa odo wo hwele wo staff no ma ke bia de ma ye bia wo nkasa mo 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 from a me team kita mo from asia mo hwe mo hwe be wo secondary school na bo so me gye 317 gana sida Okay, I came to me fine. Okay, in the assembly in front of one boy and in your more pa. No, what's that? See, what do one if you go away and pain be a banner, pain be a front on your bed in coma. Paying the pain be a my home friend and only in the home come up and say, and pain for a woody any more can on one man is here. I have one more by ya and Jemma book here. I'm a hand in the same one. One boy and okay. Now I will say, me there, eh, the madisa, no, what could be bit there, eh, Yamaso, what the year, a dream so on your cry, no such. Uh, Christopher Dazi, and of course, I'm more. You two said the more inside him poor, and yet you said I may a trog yet a coward in poor. Why say? I come now in a walk award. I want to find a funa funo. Into your magician by your quiet beam pede or the name of me and a papa or about to the metro grandu. Into Ciciano, um, say the mad demi okoda, they will pin beam by Hadea or Bokoda. I want demonstration now. Oh, and of course, because I made a compa, pain in or how shem, never did mad you call, can be belan chem. In tell them who they're paying a lamp on a can be business or the done one with it. The may in a man made a dana, the mass or a yamana. No, no, make an anti truck. Okay, so these are some of the concerns from the workers here at the FM Quanta Regional Mog. And as you heard Mr. Kuma mention, since they began their strike action, about 10 families have come around to wanting to convey their dead bodies away, but they've, they didn't allow them to do so. Also, they've had calls from the various wards to come and de- bring dead body from the wards to the morgue, and they've not allowed them. According to them, they are going to continue with this strike action until their demands are met. My name is Eric Yeroje, TV3 News, Takrade. All right, so the bottom line is don't die now if you are thinking of it. Uh, we'll be back with more on Midday Live. Stay with us. Thank you very much for staying with us. Time now for business news. The second baby and toddler fair is underway at the Marina Mall in Accra. The event is proudly organized by Media General and Planet One. Nuong Falong has more. The second baby and toddler fair brought to you by Media General and Planet One events. It's happening right now at the Marina Mall and it's going to be going on all day and also, of course, all of tomorrow. So, this is for you, baby and mama. You can come here and you can get everything that you want for baby. I'm going to speak to one of the vendors here who is, of course, selling baby clothes. What are you selling? Look at this. So this is baby onesies, that's five pieces sets we have for boys and girls. This is going for 85 cities. We have from baby to six months and we have this as well as for baby boys okay. up to 24 months. What's the maximum age you have? Okay, we, we sell from baby to 16 years. What yeah. We have one at Spinters Road and we have one at um, East Legon. Thank you so much. <laughs> you are have welcome. Day, Thank you. If you don't have kids and you show up here, you're going to have baby fever. Whatever you need for your baby, you come over to uh, uh, Essential, Baby Essentials, and you have everything. That's our name, Baby Essentials and More. Presently at Ritzway Mother Care, and they have some very interesting packs. I'm going to speak to the vendor. Tell me more about this. Do you have more like this? Yes, please. We have, we have a lot. We have baby products. We have baby food. We have doctor. We have... Um, what other have yes to have? 
we have a nurse, we have pilots, we have a lot of toys, we have diapers. Yeah, we are located on a sprinter's road opposite the KFC. Um, the plaza is Fodai Plaza. Like I mentioned, you can find everything here at the Media General and Planet One event. We have a school here that is also telling us what opportunities there are for our little ones. I'm going to speak to one of the representatives of Kids Act Montessori. So we are Kids Act Montessori and daycare. We admit children between ages six months and six years. We open Monday to Saturday, 6.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. If you're a vendor and you want to be part of this event, it's not too late. You can still come over to TV3, register, and come here, and then you can display what you have to offer for baby and mama. If you're home and you're watching this, come over to the Marina Mall. We are here all day till 9 p.m. We have everything you need for baby and mama. And that's it for the bulletin. It came your way from our studio here at Addison Way in Accra. My name is Martin Mercedes Dati. Good afternoon as always. Stay positive. Bye for now.